it seems this winter we've had an awful lot of uh, transmission rebuilds to, to, to do. Um, and so we thought we'd just show you tonight the, in, the insides of the transmissions and what normally goes wrong with them. And uh, it, being as they seem to be a mystery to most people, we'll, we'll see if we can clear up some of the, <coughs> some of the mysteries. This here unit is the engine and transmission out of a, a six-cylinder Healy. It's the uh, center shift transmission, obviously. And when you pull it out of the car, this is what it looks like. The whole lump all in one go. This lot would come out through the, the bonnet. The transmission, if you just want to take it out, it would be split here at the back of the motor. And then the transmission would have to come out through the inside of the car. Uh, we have a special lifting device to get them out, but otherwise you need two or three strong friends uh, to help you get it out. So far this winter we've built um, Healy transmissions, we've done a, a Jaguar transmission here, an overdrive, we did this uh, Sprite transmission, and uh, well there's several others that have been here and gone. Well this is a, a center shift transmission, uh, very similar to the one that we just saw on the stand attached to the motor. It's an early center shift, so it would be out of a uh, 3000 Mark II, the BJ7, or the very early, very early BJ8s. I've taken the uh, bell housing off. Um, it's just a matter of take, undoing the bolts and pulling it off. Then I'm going to take the lid off here, so I, I, I already took the bolts out. And then if you lift the lid clear, these three springs here tend to want to stick in the lid or fall into the into the the unit, so you need to be careful where they finish up. So we can pull those out. And they sit on top of three ball bearings, which are down these holes here. Okay, this one ball decided that it doesn't want to lift out with my magnet, so we'll leave it be. Uh, the next thing we have to do is pull out the selector rods here. Okay, we already took the wires off these uh, holding screws. I've taken two of them out. This is the third one. we just take it out of here. And then we can pull the selector rods out. There's one. Ooh. Maybe the second one. Yeah, there's the second one. And then this reverse one should come out a little tight. There you go. Now then, there are two more ball bearings in here. And they're in between these two areas. And they got one, and the other one's on the floor. You can lift out the selectors. There's the inner workings. Doesn't look to be too bad actually. And if you just want to have a look at these uh, selector rods here, the middle one here has a pin in it. In the middle, and the other two fit on either side of it. And those ball bearings that were on the side, they go in here. So you can only put it in one gear at a time. The, when this slides back, it shoves that little pin over enough just to shove the other ball over 
so that it won't uh, go into two gears at once. So they are fairly critical. Hmm. Look for wear on the selectors and there's always wear. There's nothing broken and they're really not too bad. Reusable. Okay, we're going to remove the overdrive now. If you look in the shop manual it tells you to remove it here and take that off and leave the adapter plate on. But we found it's much better to take the adapter plate off and then you don't get springs flying everywhere. It holds everything together. Now I already took out most of these. So we just got these top two to, to deal with. Okay, we're sliding the overdrive off the gearbox unit now. And then there are a couple of shims here that fit in, in here. Don't lose them. This is the cam for driving the, the pump in the overdrive. You put it back on, make sure it goes on in the right direction, otherwise you'll be wondering why nothing works. So this is all looking fairly standard. Okay, we just got to remove this retaining bolt here. And that's out of the shaft to the first and reverse. If it wasn't so slippery it would come out of that like that. <laughs> and then we can lift out the, the gear. There. Now then you can see there's chunks out of the end of this these teeth here. It's really not that serious or not as serious as some that we've seen. But there's a there's a good sized chunk there. It'll make for a noisy gear. Okay, before we can pull out the, the uh, input and output shafts and the gears, we have to drop the, the lay gear into the bottom of the housing. And to do that, we have to push out the, the, uh, the shaft out of the middle of it. So this down here at the bottom with these four gears on, this is the lay gear. So then we take and push this shaft out. Like so, and then that lay gear will drop into the bottom of the casing. Okay, we have the lay shaft here, and it's surprisingly in surprisingly good condition. There's no grooving or scoring in it, and uh, well, you can just see a mark there where the the edge of the housing was, but it's not uh, it's not all worn like we normally see them. So that would be reusable. And then we got to pull out the front cluster, which needs sometimes need a bit of persuading. There you go. All the needle rollers have fallen out, they go in here, so we have to rescue those out of the bottom. And then the rear shaft is another, another tight fit. I'm just using a soft hammer on this end, but it doesn't seem to be enough. That'll all lift out of there. Then we can lift the leg gear out of the bottom. And all the little needles will fall out of there. And the two thrusts and spacers 
go on the end of it. And we're left with a, an empty casing and a bunch of needles that uh, need to be rescued. Yeah, this is an early lay gear or an early transmission, so the lay gear is the early style. And it comes needle <coughs> separate needle bearings, and it has a, a little collar in each end and a spacer tube in the middle. Um, the newer um, lay gears have a cage roller that just slides in each end. It makes life a lot simpler putting it back together. So when we're checking on these, this is the first and reverse gear, and it's the straight cut gears, and it's non-synchro, and these are the ones that usually get hammered and, and lots of pieces out of them, but this one looks pretty good. If, we, uh, if the rest of the gears on here are okay, which it looks like they are, and uh, we wanted to have a, a lay gear rebuilt, then they, what they do is they cut them off here, and they weld a new first gear on, first and reverse gear on the end. And we've done a lot of those and we've never had a problem with them. Okay, the problems we normally encounter are worn synchros. Now this slider hub here will come right off and there are two synchros in here. And they should have teeth on the inside here this one has about half of them and this one is not much better the teeth are about half there they should be more pointed and the idea is that when you change gear they grip on this hub here and slow it down so that you can slide the, the gear in the other synchro is back in here and in order to get to that we have to dismantle the rest of the gear train and take it from the other end. Okay we're continuing to take this uh, main shaft apart. We've got this uh, snap ring up the end here hopefully. Pull it out and take this retainer off and the two half pieces out that hold the bearing in and the bearing wants to come off there which is awfully loose and the spacer ring that was behind it and we have to take this gear off here cluster and the synchro ring is inside there and it is fairly badly worn so that will get replaced along with the other two. Basically everything else looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, what we would normally do is pull this cluster apart and there are three ball bearings and in here that are spring loaded and will <laughs> go to the other ends of the earth if you pull this off and uh, we replace the little springs underneath them so that it holds it in gear better. But that and assembly in the reverse of this assembly is pretty much it. Okay, there's the one and two and three. And if we lift that clear And they're going to fall out. And the springs in behind here. We will replace so that it uh, holds it in gear better. This will be the uh, third and fourth slider, and it has a similar uh, arrangement. So we're going to pull this apart. the springs and balls. There you go. <laughs> Three 
in three. So we shall, we shall replace the springs in there, put the balls back in, put new synchros in, put it back together. The selectors look good. We will replace the needle bearings in the lay gear and in the uh, output shaft. This whole uh, assembly came for uh, appraisal and make sure it was going to work. And after we'd had it on our test bed, we, we knew that the uh, overdrive doesn't work. But that, uh, that's a whole different kettle of fish. So now we've got, uh, we did uh, build ourselves a test bed for testing overdrives and running transmissions. And we can go and take a look at that. Well, this is a test bed that we built for running transmissions and for testing and, and, and overdrives. And uh, it's been it's fairly straightforward and simple. We have a, well, we have a transmission on here now that is uh, just as it came to us. We don't know anything about it really, but we'll uh, we'll run it and show you what uh, what happened. We'll fire up this uh, test bed here. And you can see the uh, <coughs> pressure on the overdrive works itself up to about 400 psi. That's uh, pretty good, really. So then, <coughs> flip it into gear, put the overdrive into gear. Pressure drops way back, and then it blows up again. So, given that, the whole unit seems to be working fairly well. Okay, we'll just turn this on again. It's running in second gear now, so it seems kind of quiet, no unusual noises. But we shut it off again. Put it up into third gear. And it sounds quiet and smooth. Well, that's giving you a bit of an insight into the inside of the transmission and uh, how we test them here. Uh, now ev everything that we just took apart has got to be cleaned, and spotlessly cleaned, and then uh, reassembled. But that's, uh, <laughs> that's a story for another day.